up, party people? What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in yet again. I guess we shouldn't say tuning in anymore. That's pretty hard to Yeah. Uh, set your dials to <laughs> tech yeah, because it's the best show on the radio box. <laughs> yeah, on the radio box. Guess what episode this is? I'm going to say 10. How did you know? Because I keep very close track. What a good guesser you are. <laughs> That's great, man. Ten episodes. I know. I can't believe we We're did it. We're on our way to a dozen. We're on our way to a baker's dozen after that. You know, but a ba- baker's dozen is 13. Yeah. Dozen's 12. What's 14? Uh, baker's dozen plus one. A catorce. <laughs> yeah. That's just another language. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, that is just a, that is just Spanish. But hey, congratulations for getting us all the way to 10. I'm impressed. Yeah, um, we made it. Um, this we, is our last episode. This is our last episode. <laughs> we finally did it. We, we did what we set out to do. We accomplished everything we hoped for. Ten high quality episodes. We did it. That's all we need. Nothing left. To we prove. don't want to wear out our welcome. V A B. That's what they say. <laughs> so what's up, man? Um, you know, gaming. <laughs> gaming. Well, not you. Yeah, me. Actually, <laughs> right now, I haven't been gaming that much. Last night, I watched Fifty Nine Ways to Cook an Egg. Is that what it sounds YouTube. like? Yeah, it was a Bon Appetit YouTube video. Interesting. It's because I couldn't game at the time because I was processing video. Oh, so I was just like... So you, gotta get, that's what you got your Switch? Yeah, I guess I could have pulled out my Switch, but I didn't. That's fair. It's fun. I don't pull out my Switch that much anymore. I'll be honest. Yeah, it's interesting. The Switch to me is fascinating because I love it and I'll fight for it to the death. And when I play it, I love it, but I really hardly ever play it. Uh, handheld mode kind of sucks. Yeah. Like it's it it's cool. It's, it's nice small. to have. Like I, I I say that, but you know, like if I'm on an airplane, I'd rather have a Switch than a PS4, yes. right? Yeah, but, that is uh, true. <laughs> That's a fair point. But a hand, bad screen's better than no screen. Well, and I hate the Joy Cons. Like I get a lot of hate for this. Like if I ever bring it up around Nintendo people or on the Reddit or something, but I feel or like on the, Nintendo's Reddit. <laughs> yeah, I no, just like the subreddit. I feel like the Joy Cons are trash. Like. In terms of how they feel, or how they feel, how they're built, the the joysticks are bad. Yeah, the, the joysticks are not aren't great. very good. Like uh, everything about them is like bad. And like I get it, you're getting two of them on a three hundred dollar console, and the technology all, inside is pretty cool. Yeah, and the whole thing's all one unit. It's you know that's the thing that is good about the Switch and bad about the Switch is it's actually very cheap. Compa- yeah. like my standalone samsung tablet more expensive than a switch yeah. with no control you know what i mean like it's faster than a switch yeah but, of course um but you know no controllers no anything it's 400 dollars, right and uh so you just know like costs are cut to make that thing yeah and uh the joy cons to have so much technology in those things um they can't be assembled in a way that is expensive or hardy you know and yeah you feel it i got a launch unit my left joy con always disconnects yeah like have you used the actual controller i know it's much more expensive and they sell separately but that controller is fucking awesome i have a pro controller i love that controller i i really like it the d-pad's bad yeah that's true (laughs) you know what i mean it's not a great d-pad but like i like everything even the d-pad's okay but you're right it's not that is definitely the weak point the d-pad was good until i started playing steam world dig 2 i guess i never use the d-pad so it doesn't really uh because in steam world dig 2 like once you beat the game there's these like challenge sections that are super hard mm-hmm. kind of like mario where it's got like the bonus levels yeah and there's ones where it is extremely precise and just like in tetris also pew pew tetris also kind of showed this as well you get a lot of false presses on the D-pad. Yeah, that can be or like irritating. It's super. Ir- it's irritating when you're playing something that's very precise. Uh, so that part sucks. I actually took my mine apart and modded it. You took out the D-pad? No, I. Uh, if you look on the PCB, the problem with the D-pad is that the contacts on the inside are really close together. Like, oh, interesting. So, like when you press a side, it can really yeah. easily press up at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I just honestly opened it up, took some electrical tape, and kind of covered the inner ring of oh, the D-pad wow. sensor so that you have to full press. To, you have to really push on it. Yeah, you got to get all the way to the sides. And it's better that way. It's a oh, lot that's better. Cool. But it's still not perfect. And it's definitely not the solution I would Yeah, that's hope definitely, for. yeah. And on like a $70 yeah, you know, additional controller. Like, um, 
but whatever. Like, it's not a bad controller otherwise. I use it for everything else, and yeah. it's fine. It's no, that's a good point. I don't think I ever really use I really just use it for Breath of the Wild where you don't need a D-pad much. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, uh, I, you know, that's Breath of the Wild is the game I played the most with it. I think it. that's probably true for most people. And even, like, Splatoon where you're, like, I've used it a lot for Splatoon and you're uh, motion aiming. So, like, who doesn't matter? It's a great controller for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also wish it had analog joystick or uh, triggers, but that's a whole Yeah, that's thing. true. You know, you're not wrong. Um, that's why Trials, I guess, was really hard to play on that game because the it's not no analog triggers. Yeah, so it's always full throttle or no it's throttle, not, no pressure sensitivity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's whack. That's whack. In 2019, so speaking of the Switch, what do you think is going to go on with these two new Switches? Um, I think it's going to be Nintendo as usual, right? I think they're going to iterate, and it's not going to matter. You know, I think eventually we'll all kind of migrate to the better one. You know yeah. what I mean? Just like with new 3DS, yep. like that'll like, become the standard. Slowly. It'll become the standard slowly, and then people that bought their Switch at launch, like me, in a couple in a year or two, will you know get one for two fifty with a free game, and yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and eventually that's exactly what I did with the 3DS. And, yeah, and sell theirs for a hundred dollars on Craigslist or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, or you know, honestly, I think what will happen is there will become a big underground market for old switches why because they're all moddable oh that's true i didn't i didn't even consider the fact that intent part of why they might be doing this is be like shh gotta get rid of these these hardware exploits that's true that's a good point so they're all moddable so i think what's gonna happen is they're gonna become a huge underground black market for og switches yeah that's kind of how the vita was at first Mm -hmm. or the psp 1000 and now they're all cracked wide open but for a long time you could only crack like the the first versions first versions which they, yeah no no you're totally right that's a really good point um the cheap one will be you know it's it just seems so much like the 3ds i think what this really means i think the the most telling thing about it is this means the 3ds is definitely dead yes like it, the, this signals that the 3ds is no more yeah the cheap the the cheap switch is the new 3ds yeah um they don't want to which is great. I don't think they should have been making games with 3DS this past year anyway. Yeah. Well, they always do this. Yeah, but I wanted that Wario. Like, at least make them on both. That Wario WarioWare game should have been on both. The Metroid game should have been on both. Yeah. Uh, isolating those games on the 3DS when people really wanted to play them on the Switch, I think, was a shitty way to go about it. Uh, I get it. You got to keep selling hardware, like software for yeah. this hardware you have. And everywhere. also, we got to remember how popular it is, yeah. especially overseas. Yeah, it's everywhere. I, I get that. But sell it for both, right? Like... Yeah, there's no reason not to. Yeah, um, but it's the you know the reason they don't they want to have they wanted there to be perceived value still in buying a 3ds. Yeah, right. Like otherwise people won't buy them. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's cool. I don't think it's going to be Nintendo never takes advantage of it anyway. So yeah. yeah, this is very similar. Like this, it does feel very safe for them. It's yeah. exactly like the 3ds. You got the 2ds. You got the XL, you got blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I think you're right that everyone who takes it seriously is just going to slowly migrate over to the more expensive one. Yeah, and I think if you're sitting on your Switch right now and you're like, oh, a new Switch, I got to get the new one when it comes out, you're going to not be happy you did. Yeah, it's not like it's going to have a yeah. 50 times faster chip. Yeah, It'll probably be like a slightly better screen, slightly longer battery life. Yeah, the only thing I could see that And doing, it won't be moddable. <laughs> the only thing I could see them doing in the premium one that would encourage people to change is if they found some way to integrate voice chat into hmm. the switch which i don't think they're gonna yeah do. that doesn't seem like a priority for them that I would be cool though yeah i think their mind is made up on or, yeah i could see them maybe like releasing some sort of microphone peripheral or like headset maybe i don't know but it, that'd be a huge software challenge yeah well not at this point because they've made it so clear they don't want to do that but it works in some games yeah that's what's funny is like in fortnite it, voice chat works that's funny yeah so the first party games it doesn't yeah. I guess I don't have any first party multiplayer. But then games. again, like no one does it in Fortnite because it's so there's no good way to plug in. Like you can't charge the Switch and have So you have to do it through the USB port? The USB three? Yeah, you could use a USB dongle or like a uh, like a converter. Yeah. Or um I think you can plug into the headphone jack. Oh yeah. A um like a you know, a headphone mic yeah, an combo. Inch. Yeah. But uh the problem is if you're on the dock, you you can't route audio through the headphone. Yeah, so you can really only it do only it routes through HDMI in handheld. Yeah, you can only do it in handheld, and then it's it's just weird. It's they like, they just don't give a shit. They're not at all interested in that. No, which it's is interesting. It's funny. I was uh, over the weekend. I uh, was hanging out with a bunch of friends, uh, and they were down in town, 
and uh, a lot they all work in games, yeah. right? It's like a bunch of gaming friends, and one <laughs> of them's from Sony first party, or she's with Intel now, but was with Sony first party. Yeah, and uh, we we're just having a really fun discussion about how I think that Sony basically saw what the Wii did, and how they became the most popular console in the world by um, ignoring third parties, focusing entirely on like powerful first party experiences that you could not get anywhere else. Yeah. And just like completely mirrored that with the PS4 and just like destroyed the market. Like, you know, became the biggest thing on the market. Yeah. Right. And in much the same way that we did. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very much Nintendo's playbook and very much not Xbox and Sony's playbook to like not worry about the third party agree. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's no call of duty Sony agreement this time. Uh, Destiny is like I think the only real one that has teeth to it that people care about, like with maps and stuff. Um, but just like you know, first party is all that matters to us, like Nintendo, right? First party is all we care about. Sure, if you want to put your third party game on here, you can, but we're not really gonna do anything with it. Yeah, and I guess the only difference is it's comparable in power to the competition, which almost puts it in a better position. Yeah. Because you can get those third-party games. Because, yeah. yeah, it's not like they're not going to release Black Ops 4 on there. Of course they will. They yeah. just don't care. Yeah. Yeah, being the uh, a uh, one of the – I don't even know how to call those things. Being one of the premier systems yeah. that also is extreme. Like, you know, we being an underpowered system that did it. Yeah. Like, was like a proof of concept. Play, pay us 4 being a adequately powered system that yeah. does it is like – Wow, everyone needs this thing. Like yeah. everyone's got to have Holy shit, what a concept. Yeah, I mean, we, we we always joke about this, but there is it's so true. Like, hey, you want to sell a bunch of consoles? Make a bunch of good games. Yeah, just make some good games. You don't even have to make them. Just buy someone else and make yeah, them make buy them. people that You can don't make have to do it in Sony's like labs. And what's so crazy to me is that like they still have sequels for all these games. Yeah. Like they have not made sequels. Yeah, that's true. For any of those. Yeah, Horizon. Right? Yeah. I mean, God of War is a sequel, but sort of, it's also yeah. its own... It's kind of a reboot-ish. Yeah. There's going to be a God of War 2. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be. Like a God of... Or a God what of War... What do we call like God of War? Yeah. Mesopotamia. Whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, there's going to be another one of yeah, those of God of War yeah. games. And but I will play the hell out of it. it. There might not be another Spider-Man, but there might be. But if not, there's going to be another Spider-Man-like game. Yeah, for you sure. You know what I mean? Like, all of these games are going to get iterations. Mm -hmm. Um and you know that's what PS5 is going to launch with is all those iterations. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's you know they have so much more room left. That's why I mean that's what bogs me on Microsoft. It's like what are they going to do? Like there's so there's so many years away. Like they're doing all these acquisitions now, but that puts them five years away from releasing anything that yeah. is like yeah they're just now putting out Gears of War five. Mm -hmm. They're just now getting Halo ready. Yeah. That's they're, crazy. They're so far away. Why are they doing this? And they just did all the studio acquisition last year, right? At E3 last year, yeah. where they're, they're acquiring a bunch of people and they yep, got that We I Happy Few mm -hmm. publisher or developer and developers that seem all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, aren't high impact yeah. developers in my mind? Um, although they did get like Media Molecule, right? I think, I think so. The Dreams people. Yeah. Um, which is pretty I crazy. think so. I thought, that, I thought that was part of it. I'm yeah. not sure. I know all the people they they picked up like they left them open to earlier development agreements. So they, yeah. they're still making for other consoles. But um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, they, I mean they must have some strategy. Obviously, I mean I'm, maybe they are just thinking Xbox whatever two. <laughs> what what do you think they're gonna call it? I yeah, that's <laughs> Xbox two would actually be even more confusing. Yeah, their names are so bad. I know what is that? Yeah, Xbox is okay. I was okay with the Xbox. Xbox 360 is bad. It doesn't make any sense. Like, we're used to it. It's ubiquitous now, but think about it. It's really dumb. Xbox One is terrible. That's also terrible. X-Bone. Well, yeah. Well, they should just call it that. At least that's But I mean, that, that, that's what I mean. Like, it yeah. spells X-Bone. <laughs> X-Bone X. Yeah. X-Bone X. X. Right? X-Bones for an S, right? Like, Yeah. X-Bones X. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> Yeah. Microsoft. Well, the thing is, Microsoft's a very small company. They can't afford. Yeah, they uh, they can't afford a big marketing team. Yeah, and it's you know it's. I feel like they say the right things too. Yeah, that's what's sad about it. Yeah, I remember I was at their their conference last year, <laughs> and it was fun, man. They were like raining stuff out of the ceiling, mm -hmm. and you know it, it's it's fun. But by the end, I was like, do they? What did they actually say? Yeah, what's what, <laughs> what do the we, hell do I have to look forward to? Yeah, what do I want to play? Um, this is all spotting for me. Ask me what I played. 
Uh, but let's get to. I played a lot of Sekiro. Okay. So I guess we can start talking about that. Yeah. I, no, I'd I'd love to. That sounds great. It's uh, it's dope. All right. So next subject. Next subject. <laughs> sounds no. like we got this pretty covered. I really like Sekiro. I as a Dark Souls fan. Yeah, I was about to say we should tell people who are who are just not tuning in. You you played the hell out of the first Dark Souls and Demon Souls. I played the hell yeah. out of so, so you're, you old know, school. You get o- it. OG, if you will. You're kind of their target demographic. Kind of their target demo. And I will say, as their target demo, it really spoke to me. There was a lot of unlearning. Being a Dark Soulser. Yeah, I've heard right? that. That it's almost a disadvantage because you have to. In some ways, right? Because you feel like feel like you know how these games are supposed to play yeah and they don't play that way and it's very difficult sounds like it was very intentional on their part to be like hey guys no yeah a lot play it like that a lot of things seem to have been done with like really clear intention that i think make a lot of sense right um like there's no grinding for experience anymore you can get skill points which give you skills which are beneficial but but don't you have to kill bosses well Skill points you can get from anything. You don't get that many, and they're beneficial, but not in a way like you can't they, grind for them. You can, but they provide like different counters and stuff, not uh, like okay. health or right. attack power or any of those type of things. So even to use those, you still got to be pretty good. Like they're not going to offer you something that it's not like an easy mode that you can. No, they're not going to offer you. Yeah, they're not going to offer you a level of power that you can't. That's beyond what you kind of start with anyway. Hmm. Um. But the only way to get like damage and health upgrades is by killing bosses or Estus flask charges with the, the water bottle. Can't remember what it's right. called. Water bottle. It's a water. It's like a yeah. It's like a holy water. Or holy water thing. Yeah. So how do they how do they like raise the stakes then if you have the same abilities? Uh, does it just get harder? It gets harder. Um, it's funny. It gets harder and it sort of gets easier. You know what I mean? Like I, th- it's funny when I first started the game. It, this is very Dark Souls. Yeah. Um. Everything was so scary. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like every enemy. If you saw a group of three That's dudes, you're just like, too. oh god, I, how am I going to deal with these three dudes? Yeah. And you'd like stealth around them and try and figure it out, or like use items to try and like beat the stupid camp of <laughs> trash mobs, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, oh, this is so hard. Um. And then you get to the point where it's like. You know, like I like I got the, like it's not a thing yep. anymore, right? Like, yeah, um, you either can just run past them with no sweat or just destroy them with very little effort. And with the level of mobility this game has, with jumping and kind of double jumping up walls, clinging to ledges and pulling yourself up, and the grappling hook, like yeah. it's so much more mobile and so much more vertical. It's so easy to like skip dudes you don't want to fight, and it really creates this. You know, it's funny. I was talking to uh one of the other guys upstairs about this game and like how he's like, I don't know. The stealth is kind of shitty and, and you know, I don't like love the combat. And I was like, you know, I kind of relate. Like I really felt like one well, the first day, cause I played kind of for hours, right? The first day right. I was playing the game, I was kind of there. I was kind of getting frustrated with the stealth and frustrated with certain parts of the combat. And like, you know, people like it's all about your posture bar. Right. Mm. So like, you have a posture bar. Enemies have a posture bar. And basically, if you break their posture... At, at first, I thought you said pasta bar. Pasta, yeah. If you break their <laughs> pasta... Sounds great. Uh, if you break their posture, or like basically a red dot will appear on them. Okay. And that means they're open for like a killing blow. Ooh. Right? So you can run up and like like a backstab in yeah, yeah, the original yeah. Dark Souls. Right? And so you'll... They all have unique animations. Yeah, of course. That's some probably... Some just stab in the neck. Some very dudes. fun. Yeah, it's very fun. And bosses will have like two. So like you got to get them down twice. Or like maybe even more maybe more maybe i don't know yeah. but um but so i kept playing and what i told him is you can't think of it like a stealth game or like a souls game you got to think of it like you're sieging these areas you know what i mean like like you're really you're not a stealth guy you're like a samurai ninja shinobi right who can destroy everything who can destroy everything right so really what you want to do is kind of zip line up to roofs, find a guy, jump down behind him, just massacre, murder him, and like if he's got a buddy, just sword fight that dude and kill him too. Other people get alerted. You zip line up a roof, you run around, zip across the valley, and jump down behind another dude. Like you need to work your way around this yeah. this play space, and like um, 
and just be dynamic in the space, right? Like be mobile yeah. and be active and like just constantly be picking. Ten guys will get alerted and like chase you around and you just zip line up, jump on the other side of a building, murder the guy that was unsuspecting over there. And while these dudes are coming around the building, you zip line up, jump back on the other side hmm. and kill the last dude that was in that group. The, the straggler that took yeah. too long. And just to get, keep moving. And just keep moving and keep picking at people and keep uh, engaging <laughs> keep looking for engagement opportunities right like there's yeah. a guy i can engage there's a guy i can engage there's a guy and then eventually it's like there's nobody left yeah like they're all dead it does sound like it's much more about interacting with the environment not just the verticality mm -hmm. but like movement and you know dark souls was much all about memorizing counters and whatnot 100 percent. like two or three cool. times i've had to be like i'm stuck and like i like google like what do i do at this point and it's like just look down <laughs> and like you you're look like, wait down, what do you mean and you look down and there's like branches and like ledges and you're like oh like i need to jump yeah. i need to jump off this bridge yeah and like you know and zip line around and like use like the vertical space yeah or like you know wall jump back and forth to get up something when you really like are so unaccustomed to like to that type of you know if there's a if there's nothing you have to go down in dark souls there's a staircase yeah because there's no jumping you're gonna die if you jump down yeah right and with this, it's like, no, you need to, like, you can just skip bosses, like mini bosses at yeah. least. Like, you can see one, but like, I don't want to fight him, stealth around and just move on with the game yeah. without ever engaging him, you know? Yeah, you'll just miss out on whatever he would have dropped. Whatever he would have dropped or, um, or maybe he drops, you know, some of them drop jack shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, um, yeah, maybe it's nothing. You don't really know until you engage him. Hmm. Um, but, you know, I think what's important is those mini bosses are there to create these like uh, skill checks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like one of the first bosses you face is probably one of the hardest bosses you face in context of like where you're at in the game. Yeah. Because he's a spear guy. Right. And spear guys like because the game up to that point is all about like blocking to counter. Well, you can't block thrusts. Right. Like you can't parry a thrust. Because they're coming at you. And so the spear guy is like impossible to block. He has super range. Yeah. He's very fast. And he just murders you. Like <laughs> he just, just destroys yeah, just you destroys every time. Destroys you every time. Um, but one of the first skills you can unlock is the Meraki counter. I think that's what it's called. Meraku count Meraki or I say Meraki, but we have a product we sell called Meraki. It's a networking product. And so I'm not, I don't think they're the same name. They, they might be. They I, might be the same they thing. They might be the same thing. <laughs> but, you know, once you get to him and you unlock this counter and you read the tool text, you realize, like, oh, like, this is exactly for fighting him. Right. Uh, okay. This is going to teach me how to deal with thrusts. Yeah. And you get this counter, and the counter is you dodge towards a, a spear attack. And you'll run up the spear. Oh, that's and cool! And kick it down and, and break the start posture. Stabbing. And then, and then you can, and then you can start breaking down their posture. Yeah, right. Huh. And you can do it on every spear attack. So you're just like ruining this guy. And you know, as you learn to play the game, you also realize this guy's not really in a well defended position where you find him. So if you kind of stealth around and draw out the people around him, you can stealth to him and stealth kill his first like pip or yeah, the first yeah, yeah. half of his health off so like once you kind of understand like those systems he's actually kind of a pushover right yeah. like he's he's actually not hard to kill but if you don't learn those systems if you're not like yeah, you're just reading the, the toolkits and trying to engage and even you know if you have to googling for problems right which i definitely suggest with this game um you're gonna you're gonna keep banging your head against it and be like this is dumb but once you understand you're like no like this is sick. Like, like just yeah. having this guy is so powerful. Just running up his spear and shutting him down and yeah. shoving your sword like into his th neck, like is that sounds so satisfying. Is powerful. It's so satisfying. It sounds like really good game design. I mean, I can't think of anything better than like this is so hard until you understand the system. Like, it's the kind of game when you do a replay, yeah, you'll probably have a blast because you'll be like, <gasps> I remember how fucking hard this guy was, and then you'll just eviscerate him immediately because you have all the tools at your disposal. Even if you watch our after show. Um, the last one, I put it up actually this morning because oh, cool. it took me a while to edit. But uh, there's a clip in there of me playing yeah. Sekiro. And uh, in that clip, I'm fighting a boss. Oh, cool. Right? And I can't remember his name, but he's a big dude on a horse, right? He's got a, he's also got a, like a, it's like one of those Chinese general spears, you mm -hmm. know, like where he's attacking down from his horse. And like, 
his uh, his intention is obviously to teach you it doesn't matter if they're big yeah right like you have to fight them like there's you can't you can't just jump away like it's not dark souls you can't just like three like circle dodge his feet and get in shots like you have to engage him you have to parry his attacks yeah you have to break his posture yeah, you have to go at him you have to Be go aggressive at him. Just because he's big and scary doesn't mean you shouldn't try to fight him. Like it's like, a good lesson like for you, all of us. Yeah, it is. But <laughs> uh, and so I, this was like only the second time I tried to fight him, and I was just randomly. I thought I was gonna die. I ran up and initially was kind of trying to dodge around, and I try and jump away from an attack, and I get slashed out of the air and instantly killed. Uh, you can res after dying once. Right. Uh, so that's why it's called shadows die twice. Uh, and so I res, and he's still messing me up, and I'm down to, like, out of healing items. I'm just looking at this dude, and I'm just like, all right, let's go, right? And, <laughs> and like, when he's far away, you can, like, zip line, you can zip line onto him and pull him and then oh, attack him in the air. Cool. It's cool. So you zip line to him, you're attacking him, and I'm just standing in there, and I just land, like, two parries. Like, boom, boom. And I just start wrecking him, and boom, I get the first knockdown, right? And now I'm just like. You're dead. Like I'm. Yeah, you like, got it. Like I'm. That, I'm that in. Like came yeah, back. It's just like yeah. Like it's just you're confident. You feel good. You're just like there's no way you can kill me. Like there's no oh, way. That's so cool. And you start slashing this dude. You see him load up attack, and you're like no. And you just start hitting him <laughs> again, right? And it there is nothing as exciting and gratifying. Like even Dark Souls, right? You be like Ornstein and Smo. Like you take forever. You've been farming souls. You finally got to the place where you can beat them. That's great. Like, that feels really good. Yeah. But being able to, like, face these bosses and just be like, I've got you figured out. You're done. You're done. You're, you're done. You're done. You can't, <laughs> you can't touch you me. You can't touch this. I'm the wolf. I'm the son of the owl. You will never. You <laughs> lay will a never hand lay a, on me. Lay a finger on me, my boy. And, All then right? you, and then you get to the next boss and he kicks your and ass. And then you get to the next <laughs> boss and he kicks your ass until he doesn't. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? That's what's so gratifying yeah. until he doesn't. And, oh, that uh, sounds fun. Yeah, it just feels so good. It's so interesting. I love the uh, like the feudal Japan art. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like carved Buddha. Like the the bonfires are like these Buddha stones that you know you pray at them and it like does this like uh, like this uh, like burst out like the blue like boom. You know, like, yeah. it's like it's super cool looking. I think the game's beautiful. Is it? That's good, David. Yeah, it's not even like super advanced, and it is locked at sixty frames, which oh, that's weird. Is is weird? From always does that shit. Why do you think? Is it just because of like hitboxes, or because they think? No, I think be... it's the engine. Uh, I think they've they've been working with the same basic engine for all this time for three hundred years. For three hundred years, and they tie the game speed to the frame rate. I know that was like a big thing with. Uh, with DS fix is that you'd speed it up and the frame rates would change the gameplay uh, speed. Yeah. So I think there's some of that. Like you kind of break it when you improve the frame rate. Um, I wish they'd move on a new engine. I know that's expensive. Yeah. And I know they're not like, they are not the a giant studio that can afford that. Maybe they're getting with, there. Yeah, they're getting there. And I think with like Bloodborne money, I could see that happening. I could definitely see Sony. That's the problem is I think that their primary audience is console games. Yeah, definitely. And so 60 frames is fine. So they don't have a lot of reason to invest. But I do think that Sekiro doesn't run that great on a regular PlayStation. I don't think it runs that well on a regular Xbox. Um, so I do think that the engine is getting to an age where they're going to need to modernize it anyway. Yeah. So hopefully that comes with a frame rate boost in the future. Yeah. But great game. Feels so good. Landing sick parries feels so good. I can't wait to try it. I mean, even like watching videos of people and like, like you know, it's on on Reddit or something. You see somebody land like a, you know, guys will come at you with the combo, you know, and you're just like parry, parry, parry. And you just start hitting them, and it just it looks so good. It feels so good. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Um, it's frustrating of if you're not down for that. Probably not for you. It's slow. You're gonna die a lot if you're not down. Like if you want a story game that's going to uh, peruse you through a story in a not so painful like <laughs> if you want devil may cry play devil may cry yeah that's what i was about to say how I, I know they're i'm not trying to compare them in any way but just because you've played them both yeah recently and it sounds like they're profoundly different but not to say one's better necessarily but can you compare the two at all they're both so gratifying in their combat that's in yeah, such that's awesome in such different ways right if you want like it's like the two ways to feel badass, right? Yeah. Like, 
Like, do you want to overcome adversity and struggle? And, like, do you want to be, like, Apollo? Do you want to be Creed from the Creed movie? Like, Rocky? Is that what is that what fills your heart, right? <laughs> or do you want to be, like, One Punch Man? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, do you want to be, like, an Just unstoppable force? God. God that can never be defeated. Because that's Devil May Cry. And I think both things are so valid. It's so great. So who do you think would win in a fight? Dante or Wolf? Sadly, Dante would. <laughs> He's well, got dual mo- dual wheeled motorcycles. <laughs> True. So you're saying that's the, the there's not dual wheeled motorcycles in Sekiro? Not yet. Not yet. Also, DLC. I DLC. have not turned into a devil monster yet. So Don, uh, Wolf may have a devil trigger, <laughs> but I haven't found it yet. <laughs> How far into the game are you? Would not you that say? far. Two bosses. Okay. Two main bosses. So it seems like. I don't know yet because I've only done the two bosses. It seems like the game is set up sort of in a um, Demon Souls kind of way where you kind of enter these specific memories. Yeah. And um, and they're huge, but those will have like a boss at the end of that. A lot of mini bosses and open area to explore. But then those, at least as far as I've basically played into like a memory of the past and gotten to that boss. And then oh, that's cool. this area in the present, I've gotten to that boss. So I don't know if the present one I'm going to, I literally just beat that boss. So I don't know if I'm going to keep continuing through that same timeline in place or if it's going to put me in a different section. Hmm. But it, you can fast travel anywhere from the start, which is nice, which is not always the case with Demon's Souls. Is that, like a, is that like an open world? Um, is that like a hub? It's It's... A linear world. Okay. Like, you can travel without loads from, other than the memory part, from the place you start to the place I am now, but it's it's a very, it's a very path yeah. progression there. And there's a lot of side stuff to explore. There's a lot of, like, there's a lot of places where, like, I see grappling points and cliffs and stuff that, like... I'm not sure how to get to them or I've done, tried it a couple of times and fallen off and just been like, I'll go a different direction for now. There's a lot of splitting paths where I think cool. you can explore different directions and different ways. Literally, I didn't even know about one of the bosses until I got to the other boss and everyone's like, you didn't beat the other boss? And I'm just like, what? <laughs> what? And they're like, yeah, there's another, there's a, this boss. And, you know, I thought, because in the memory part, I died to a mini boss, but it pulled me out of that memory and was like, oh, that's the memory. And so I was like, oh, I, I must have been supposed to die. Oh, right. But it, yeah. And I and I guess not. You beat that guy and you can beat the next and you beat the next boss. So <laughs> um, it's very interesting the way it's set up. But, you know, fast travel is open anytime you get a, 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 a bonfire. I'll use Dark Souls terms to make it clear. Anytime you get a bonfire, you can fast travel to it. That's cool. Yeah, it's. They make it real easy to move back and forth and get your upgrades. There's really good tool tips in the game, which is not something they had in Dark Souls. Yeah, that's kind of outside their wheelhouse. You can eavesdrop on conversations that will tell you weak points for like, you know, you'll be literally looking at a mini boss and you'll see two dudes in front of him talking and you can eavesdrop and be like, this mini boss is sure weak to fire, <laughs> you know, and you're like, good to know. <laughs> He's murder, <laughs> right? Like. Uh, thanks guys yeah thanks thanks for the tip thanks minions here's yeah. a tip here's for you a, ooh, <laughs> I, was, I was gonna go there too you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be son of a gun well that sounds awesome i can't wait to try it it's a really good game um not it, for everybody but a yeah. great game it's interesting that they i didn't quite realize this but i didn't realize that they had the tenchu license for a long time yeah and this started its life as a tenchu game and it shows yeah that's what i've heard and i was curious and that's kind of cool though it sounds yeah. like they Kind of took Tenchu and put it in Dark Souls and smashed them together in a cool way. It's funny, like on the dark on the Sekiro subreddit, there's a big thing about this game being the game that exposes you as a fraud in Dark Souls because it's uh it's all about getting good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's it's all these people like coming to terms with the fact that they actually they, were not good. They at never Dark Souls. really got good at Dark Souls. Like they just leveled up a lot or did yeah. like a, a min max build or 
used really heavy weapons to break guards nonstop and just one shot everything. That's what I did. <laughs> you know, you just get the biggest weapon you can get, and then no matter you, things can block it, and they'll still die. Yeah, you know. Um, so, but you can't do that in Sekiro. Can't do that in Sekiro. You're on your own. Although there's some arm attachments that you can uh, break some guards with if you need it. Just uh, keep your eyes peeled for those, you know. Interesting. And watch out for those bird things. There's like some emu looking birds that are real, real tough fellas. They'll get, they'll get you. Those guys, and then the little short dudes with there's these little like assassin dudes with big wood hats that are like the size of their body, hmm. and the hats deflect your swords because they're hard. Oh, right. So they're jumping all over the place. It's a lot of like high speed combat, which is really cool. Yeah. It's very not Dark Souls. Yeah, to be like, it sounds like they really wanted to break out of the mold, yeah, but not like, too far out. Not too far. It, it still f- <clears throat> feels very Dark Souls in the way that it is so rewarding. Like it's yeah. That's what that's what amazes me, is that the way the way the game found a way to still invoke that emotional response and that reward center. Yeah. Um, and to really feel so good when you succeed, but also completely shift the paradigm from Dark Souls. Yeah. No, it's amazing. That's yeah. a sign of a good developer. They know what works. And yeah. they're not afraid to take a slight risk. Which makes me hope that Gearbox is also one of those developers. Yeah. Did you see what I saw? <laughs> well, you might have to be more specific. I assume you're referring to a trailer that dropped today. The Borderlands 3 Today trailer. being Thursday. Today being Thursday. Yeah. Borderlands. So were you were, before we talk about the trailer, were you you were big into Borderlands? I played Borderlands. Why is what's, Borderlands what's so that? hard to say? I, I played, know. I've never had trouble saying I, it before. I played Borderlands. Uh, I played Borderlands. <laughs> that was not. On I did it again. <laughs> Why don't you take Borderlands? I played Borderlands one a lot. Okay. Uh, Borderlands two, I played, um, but not as much. Yeah. I will say, like, when I hear people getting so into Borderlands two talk, you know, I'm like, I don't remember this, so maybe I didn't play it so much. <laughs> Um, at those Borderland two parties, you're yeah, always attending, and then yeah. you get get kicked out because you weren't quite into it enough. I think I, by that point, I really moved into competitive PC gaming a lot more, and wasn't as like, give me that co op, give me that console loot. games. <laughs> like, um, but I do like Borderlands a lot. I played the second one not a lot. Yeah, probably like ten hours. Yeah, I probably- liked it. I didn't. It didn't quite click with me. I didn't particularly like the sense of humor that much, mm-hmm. and I'm sure I probably just there's probably just stuff I haven't seen. I'm not like saying it's bad, but I just didn't. It didn't grip me in the way it did for a lot of people. Yeah, I did like the way it looked for the time, and you know it was fun. It's a loose shooter. Like the concept is very satisfying. I think it'd be interesting to see now that this is such a more popular genre, and no one's quite still figured it out yet. We can talk about the other one in a little while. Um, it'll be interesting to see w- what lessons they learn or if they do anything. Because I have to say, the trailer looked very Borderlands much two. like the... Uh, exactly. It really looked yeah. exactly the same. Like, if you had told me, like, this is Borderlands 2, just because I haven't played a lot of it, I'd say, oh, wow, Borderlands 2 looks really good, but I totally believe you. <laughs> yeah, I I was having this conversation today. Um, and that's kind of what I was implying with uh, From Software and Sekiro. Like, you know, I, it makes me think of Resident Evil 2. Yeah. And, you know, I think the magic of Resident Evil 2 is that it feels like Resident Evil so much so that you don't realize that it's nothing like Resident Evil 2 yep. was. You I know totally what I mean? Agree. It channels like, the soul of it so, so brilliantly while while making it better in every conceivable way. Yeah, it's like, how do you capture that heart? I don't know how they did it, but they did, like no one else has ever done it. Not that well, you yeah. know what I mean? And it's such a good modernization. And my concern is that uh, Borderlands 3 is going to be... People loved Borderlands 2. Here's more. Yeah. And um, not like Resident Evil 2 where it's like people loved these feelings about Borderlands 2. Let's bring in here's, a new generation. Or here's, yeah, here's how we deliver that emotional response and that feeling and that, you know, which I think is what From Software did too with Sekiro, right? Like how yeah. do we deliver that same um, that same feeling of accomplishment, that same feeling? like and Resident Evil 2, how do we make people feel you know, nervous, intense all the time in this game yeah. and like never really safe and never really yeah. secure. You know what I mean? And and they did such a good job delivering that. And I don't, I'm Gearbox did good with the first two games. I'm not going to sight unseen, say that they're not going to figure it out with a third. 
I just think yeah, it's a and tall I mean, order. And to be fair, we've only seen one trailer with yeah. no real gameplay, so we got to no remember that. Play, I, yeah. I think everyone more or less agrees that it didn't look particularly great in terms of, like, purely technologically speaking. Mm-hmm. But that said, I mean, again, yeah, we know nothing about the systems or so. Who knows? It could be taking huge risks. We have no idea. Yeah. Uh, I would say the trailer was not did not blow me away by any means. No, but I got, you know, my Borderland fans' friends are very yeah, excited. Good. No, for sure. And there is a there's the case to be made, like, if it is more of the same. That's not necessarily a bad thing if you're a huge fan. And this might be one of those gamer entitlement things where it's like, it can't be too similar, but if it's too different, I mean, you know, you can't, you, as a developer, it's one of those situations where you can't really win unless you're just, I mean, you can, unless and they you have. Can. That's what I mean. <laughs> unless like, you do. That's why I'm so, like, tired of developers, right? Because <laughs> they always have that, like, can't win. All right, I either yeah. make it old like the old people want or make it new like the new like, people no, you, want. There's a way to walk that line. Yeah, but, like, no, there people win at this, and that's yeah. that's called succeeding. No, for sure. Right? I totally like, agree. I agree. Yeah, that's what success is. It's winning at this. It's yeah. figuring it out. It's, it's getting me to buy your game more than other people's games yeah. because it's better. And that's not an easy – no one thinks that's easy to do. And if you yeah. fail, it's not a judgment it's not of, your, luck. of you as a human being. Yeah. But, yeah, it's not luck being able to figure that out. And, uh, and you know, like that, that's what, that's the magic Capcom has figured out right now. Yeah. They're on a, they're on a tearing streak. That's what made Monster Hunter so good. Yeah. They made it so much, you know, they take away all the shitty shit, but still find a way to deliver those moments that are so exciting. Still has terrible online, right? Like still has so many bad things about it, but they like, are like, how do we deliver that emotional response that, that people really got from these games like that that made them what they are and uh i hope gearbox can do the same i am fingers crossed hopeful that they can because yeah of I, course they wish them all the success um i just uh, hopefully they this doesn't move their colonial marines remake off the docket because i'm really looking forward to that i never played colonial what is I, what is that aliens colonial marines was just a oh of, it's like one of the worst games ever made i think i know what that is gearbox made it is it they? Yeah, they made it, but they, uh, by all accounts, they just got the license, started working on it, and were like, fuck this, and then started working on Borderlands 2, I guess, or maybe I feel it like was I've seen it. the third one or something, but it's like one of those games that's so insanely bad that it's almost worth playing. Mm. Which oh, sucks, because the license is a no-brainer. It's one that had the broken AI. Yeah. That was the, the, the story. Right, yeah, because there was like one mistake in the code. That's yeah, yeah, game. yeah. That's the game. It still sucks outside of that. For the record, it's not like that made it a good game, but... uh I just think it's funny. Their pedigree is Borderlands, and then this absolutely one of the worst <laughs> games of the generation. Yeah, it's it's interesting, right? It's like, funny, yeah. It's funny. I remember when Borderlands like first came out. Yeah, it was I cool. was in San Diego at the time, and um, I remember a gentleman came into the printing shop I worked at, and he needed posters and he needed them fast. And I'm like, okay, that's what we're here and for. We're like, what are you What are you doing? And he needed Borderlands posters for Comic Con. Oh, I think it was Comic Con, maybe E three, but probably Comic Con. Yeah. He was in uh, San Diego. Yeah, you're San Diego. Um, and like we whipped them out super quick, like a you know a couple thousand. Do of you them remember what him. the poster was? Uh, it was just the, it was just like the, it was kind of like the teaser image, like the, yeah, the like the crest kind of, but it was a head, you know, yeah, with yeah, all yeah. the stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it was like that. It was like the freaker guy, like yeah. face. Um. And yeah, we made him a shitload of posters real quick, and he took them out, and I was just like, what is this game? Like, I knew <laughs> games at the point. Yeah, yeah, of course. I was like, what is this game? And he was telling us about it, and uh, and that's when that uh, Cage the Elephant trailer came out, The mm-hmm. um, and uh, the rest is history, man. That game blew up, you know, yeah. like, it, out of nowhere, uh, really just kind of popped off, but um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's exciting to see. I, I think the thing that is fun about stuff like this is it's so interesting to see how games like this will play out especially when you're not you know there's games that i'm so excited about that it's like i feel so invested that it's hard to watch Mm -hmm. and there's games like this where it's like oh this will be interesting yeah you know yeah Yeah, and you're not so invested that you're going to be insanely sad if if, you know no if they make a mistake i'm sure they're not going to fail you know, it's probably this is this seems like the kind of thing where they're going to make a relatively safe bet. The only risk here is that they might not take enough risk. I think that's really going to be interesting is how well they really embrace what people expect from online yeah. loot shooters. Now, yeah. Right. 
I think that uh, the previous games were not very connected. Yeah, they were kind of old school. I mean, they were old. It was kind of that plop into someone's co-op session kind of thing. Yeah, and it was a uh, console mostly focused. Yeah, I think, mostly so console focused. There's, they still had some kinks to work out. So I'm really interested to see, like, is this going to be like a like a Destiny style loot shooter? Yeah. You know what I mean? Is it going to kind of have that faux uh, MMO kind of thing, like the RPG ish? Yeah. Is it going to be like, you know, I think it would be cool as a I think more games should kind of adopt Diablo's kind of uh, tier difficulty rushed kind of, uh, you know, style, right? Yeah. I think I think that's so fun. It's so gratifying. And I feel like not many games kind of follow that where it's like, oh, just get super overpowered and then, and then keep go to running Torment this 13. in extremely insane in difficulties. But they'll still be... You'll just keep running it at difficulties that your overpowered self can yeah. overpower. Barely, though. Barely, though. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. you never want to die. Yeah, you, you never want to die. You just want to be slightly more challenged. Yeah, which feels good. Like, it's a fun way to experience it. And it's funny, too, because, like, from an asset generation perspective, they're just, they're not actually really doing very much except tweaking difficulty. Yeah, it's the so same it's like, it seems Yeah, like, people who run Diablo 2 or 3 million hours, there's only a few different maps, really. Like, it's kind of amazing that yeah, they, just, they managed to... To take something so simple and make it so engaging. Hey, just throw on some curveballs, right? Some goblin yeah. stages or the yeah. cow yeah. stage, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, you got you found all the drops. Now you get a special stage. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like now do it all again. Now do it all slightly harder. Yeah. New season, start over. Yeah. Right? Like one uh, new transmog. Yeah, and a new pet that like, took our, de- our our guy our designer like two days to make. I feel that like that would be perfect for like a Destiny or a Borderlands style game, right? Like, yeah. No, for sure. I wish Destiny had stuff like that. Right, where you were really doing that, like over and over, instead of this kind of like, oh, don't get, don't get too much good loot, otherwise, you know, we got to cap you out. It's you got your drops yeah. for the week. To only play on Tuesdays, like yeah, finds you know? her. Yeah, it's like nah, man. I want to run torment thirteen be OP. A thousand times. I yeah. run torment fourteen a thousand times. Like I want to kill everything. Yeah, that power fantasy is so good, and I feel like that's the thing they try and discourage in those games yeah, right which they, is really the point is like that's what i want i want to feel like i i worked from nothing to complete god tier that's what's really disappointing me about loot shooters so much right like um the the scaling has really destroyed the fantasy right yeah because you know even if you are whatever end game level in those games if you go back to a starting area now everything's your level yeah right you're never you're never way too strong yeah for the zone, God, that would be so fun. Like in something like the Division Two, which I've been playing a lot uh-huh. of. That I, I love that concept. Like once you have a, you're level thirty, you have like your crazy ass modded guns. It'd be fun to just go back to outside the White House and just everyone will rush you and you just like one pistol shot, boom, and yeah, just done. God, that would be so fun. It's like that old MMO thing, you know. Like I remember in like World of Warcraft, like you'd get to end game level and like you'd have a friend that like we needed to level yeah. up. And you'd be like, let's go. And you just yeah, Diablo, same thing. go to dungeons. Yeah. Just be like, just stay back. Just chill, man. Just stay back. Pick man. A, after I massacre everything, run and get the loot. Yeah. I love, I have so many memories of playing Diablo 2 as a young man. And when I finally had access to the internet, I would just go in. I'd find someone who's level 80 or whatever. And then I'd be like, hey, you know, you beg him. Like, hey, man, can I join? And he'd be like, no problem. Some people are nice. Yeah. And then you just scroll a town portal right in, right in the beginning of the dungeon. You walk in. You wait there. Your experience bar just goes, brr, yeah. bing, brr, bing. And then he's like, all right, I'm on floor two. Another t- scroll of town portal. You run through, pick up gold. It's so fun. It's like, it, it's basically cheating, but because it's someone else doing it for you, it doesn't feel like that. And I it doesn't that. matter. Like, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, that's true. Like, that's the thing. Like, and that's the thing, too, about, like, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that came out with Anthem and, like, like the way they scale things. And it's like, it's a single player game. Like, who yeah. cares? Let people have drops. Dude, let yes. the people have their drops. <laughs> you know? Let them have their drops. I guess there's a new patch that, like, is even more limiting to drops, right? I saw a tweet of, like, like how can you make this worse, <laughs> right? And it was like, a they'll new find pa- a way. Yeah, a new patch that, that further, like, stopped some of the guaranteed good loot drops you were going to get. Yeah. And now, like, other people can pick up loot that goes into your inventory. And so people just pick up a bunch of grays and blues and like fill up your inventory. You're like, what the f, man? Like, that sounds lame. Let people have fun. That's yeah. one thing I'll give Borderlands. They never stop you from trying to have fun. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
I actually let's talk about this for a second because this is something that always drives me fucking crazy, especially oh, hear in this. single player games. I want to hear this. I absolutely love when you when you can break a game. When the game is not afraid to let you break it. Again, when it's single player, when it's multiplayer, it's different. Yeah. But, like, I don't know if you saw this article on Polly on this Morrowind history. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. It's a great read. It's just an interview with all the guys who made Morrowind. That game is so cool because they shipped it, and they're like, yeah, it's totally broken. That's mm-hmm. why we were allowed to do all the crazy, crazy shit we want to do. Mm-hmm. That's why I remember this very clearly the first time. You, you're, you're about to kill someone. It says, hey, you're going to break the game if you kill this person. Do you want to continue? And yeah. then you hit yes, and the game's broken. Mm-hmm. Yes. Why can't? Why don't more people let you do that? It's fucking great. Like, and then if you do break the game, and you're like, I'm so overpowered, I'm only level two. That's one of the reasons I'm having so much fun with Final, Final Fantasy VIII, is it lets you break it immediately if you know how. Yeah. And it's fine, because here's the thing. If you don't want to break it, you don't have to. Yeah, that's. I'm honestly kind of scared with Sekiro right now to break it, because... I know in the Dark Souls games, like I haven't tried yet. Yeah. But in the Dark Souls games, you could kill all the NPCs and yeah. steal their armor, right? Like if you, <laughs> that sounds fun. Like I can remember in Dark Souls, there's literally like people in the starting area that like are strong, hard to kill, but like standing next to a cliff, and you can you like just knock them off, knock them off the cliff, and go collect their stuff and have good armor. Like yeah, dude. See, I love that kind of shit. I love that kind of stuff too. But like you know, you can kill everybody. You can kill the guy that you learned skills from. That's awesome. And you can never learn skills. Great. You know what I mean? It's like I mean, I do. I do like the idea that they give you that they let you know you broke it. Yeah. Which isn't always possible. But that that was something I loved about Morrowind is they shipped it broken, and it's up to you if you want to break it. And I. Like, the fact that cheats don't really exist anymore. I mean, they do with console commands, but not in the way they used to. Like, yeah. I, the whole thing where, like, you, uh, Red Dead Redemption was good about this. Mm-hmm. You want to break it? Go ahead. You don't get achievements. That's fine. I don't care. I'm cheating. Uh, yeah. Give me cheats, man. Let me break the game if I want. I fucking paid six dollars for it. It's not hurting anyone. Yeah. Rockstar always seems down to let you have a good time if you want to. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's just my thing. I, I, I'm sad we've gotten away from that. And I totally get part of that's because everything's online and yeah. that makes things different. But, man, and if a game's single player, something like Sekiro or whatever... Let me break the damn thing. Well, and I think just the sanctity of this, like, like, oh, no, this loot shooter is, is very important. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and like, there is there is that sense that developers are a little too precious with their stuff. Like, it's it's developers like, are the worst, bro. <laughs> it's like how for 20 years or whatever, you couldn't skip cutscenes. Like how fucking that is so annoying. And I love a good cutscene. But the fact that they make you watch a cutscene yeah. because they're like. You don't know how long we spend on this cutscene. We spend so much. You have to watch it. Otherwise, you're you're robbing yourself of our beautiful art. It's yeah. like, dude, fuck off. I paid $60. Let me do whatever I want with this software. And let me clarify. I don't think individual developers are bad. Of course not. I actually think developers are very good people. I yeah. know a lot. Yeah. I, have, I have a lot of friends that are developers. Yeah. I think that's they what you say. I think that's what you say when you don't want to <laughs> seem like you hate all of them. I have a friend who's a developer. Yeah, my one of my best friends is a developer. But, uh, but all the rest of them. No, I think what happens is like like tribally yeah you know like you kind of have to come to these like common yeah. uh thinks it happens in every profession it happens in every profession and i think developers have come to this like uh like group think that that's like no we do important art the things we make are important yeah you know the people that don't like them are Philist- toxic assholes philistines. yeah they're philistines um they're ignorant they probably live in the Midwest. Yeah, and they're probably racist. And they're probably yeah racist and, and hateful, misogynist, yeah. and misogynist, and uh, you know. So you have to watch our cutscenes. You have to, you <laughs> know what I mean. Do not break our game. Yeah, do not. Do not break our delicate. If flower. I wanted you to have extra attack damage, exactly. I would have given it to exactly. you. Exactly, exactly. You know the what mentality. I mean? I'm like, like, no man. Yeah, but it's like it's fun like we're, ha- we're playing yeah. games baby isn't the whole idea yeah. like, I-, I always at the end of the day it's like is this game fun to play and yeah. it's a good game in that regard yeah do you enjoy playing it then it's a good game and believe me this is every like even our, our company totally i was just gonna I'm say i'm constantly reminding people we only sell computers yeah you know what i mean like people get so stressed out totally and they're like i gotta work all weekend it's like no you don't you we definitely do not all we do is sell computers yeah i think about that a lot like if i have to call in sick or if i have to leave i always get stressed out and i'm like dude i'm not a brain surgeon yeah i'm not a fucking brain surgeon no. i make content for like a computer company yeah, no and i enjoy it and it's great but yeah it is not it's not important work in that regard no and that's not to say games aren't important i think they are but all of our jobs are very important yeah but that's <laughs> totally. not like and i do think games are often art but it doesn't have to be and it's okay to like at the, again, at the end of the day, they're supposed to be fun. Yeah, I think everyone wants to have it both ways. I think that's yeah. the... Like, if your games are art, 
then you know then just provide them to the public you know like yeah, you know what i mean yeah, that's like a good point, yeah. like like then just do it for your heart right yeah. you know but no it's not it's a business right yeah and you know there's a reason you want to uh unionize yeah. and you know what i mean you don't want to do crunch and you want to because this is a business this is yeah, not your job this is not a higher art form right yeah. like like drake doesn't want to unionize right <laughs> and i'm not saying he is the ideal artist no i'm saying he is making what we have popularized as art and his on his own yeah you know what i mean like yeah like doing like trying to impress the masses yeah and if that's what you want to be then embrace that but if you want the man to you know what I, to distribute, to distribute your platform the, yeah to so distribute wealth like and a and platform you can buy it. yeah and yeah then stop being so sanctimonious yeah and, and let me break your goddamn single yeah. player game and i i think you deserve you know and that's not to say i don't think you don't deserve health care and job <laughs> security i think you do but calm down it's a fucking game yeah right like like just calm down it's not it's not you're not i don't know i don't even know what an artist is i don't even know who does art you're not van gogh <laughs> He yeah, he did art. He cut his he ear off. Made too. a lot of games. He made a lot of good games. I think yeah. he made dreams. <laughs> uh, real quick, we're already like going so long because I did not shut up about Sekiro. No, it's okay. It's but the hot, it's the new hotness. It is the new hotness. I want to hear your take on Division Two. Okay. I haven't played it at all. Yeah, I'm still interested. Yeah, I I've only put in I think twelve hours, something like that. I'm level. That's good. I'm level eleven. I think that's a lot of hours. There. Yeah. No, I'm not saying only like I'm being humble i just mean I, you know there's a lot i haven't seen humble brag from what I, from what i understand the end game content's going live on the 5th of april which mm-hmm. is very cool um i am nowhere near even the first world tier so you played a lot of the first division i didn't play a lot of the first so i'm you know i might be saying things that you already know overall i'll put it simply i really like it Good. it feels very much like the first one but better in just about every way mm-hmm. it looks amazing the uh, level amazing. of amazing it looks amazing the level of detail is extraordinary. It really is. It's beautiful. Um, the character models are not good. And one thing that's interesting is the voice acting is very poor. I I believe that. Which is kind of surprising for such a huge game. I know it's like a, you know, it's Montreal. It's a French studio. But it just, it's think, like, come on. I think the first one was kind of cheesy too. Yeah. And that's the other thing is the story itself is not very good. But they still, they do a good job of telling like stories within the world. And again, you're not playing the division. You're not playing any Tom Clancy game for the story. Yeah, it's a it's a really fun and the loot's great. There's some issues balance wise. And again, I'm not super far. I will say it's a lot more fun to play co-op. So yeah, I recommend I'm playing definitely. it with a person as you'd assume you can play it single player. I have. I just was not too long ago and it's fine. But Division's playing with another person fun. is, is yeah, it's way fun better, co-op. especially if it's someone you know. Yeah, it's a good it's a it's one of the best co-op games. Totally. It's uh, great, man. It's it's like if you like the first one, it's like that. But everything's a little smoother. The controls are better. It looks better. It's bigger. It's so positional. That's what's so fun about playing it. Yeah. Up, right. Being able to be like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. cover them here. You flank around. Yeah. You flank I'm, around I'm gonna, those barrels over there. Yeah. I'm gonna throw my turret. You throw yeah. out your you know your chemical launcher. And I think it's. Re- I mean, I haven't played the new one, but it's very similar. The division as a whole. I think the reliance on like skills and mm-hmm. using your tools. Yeah. Like, uh, and even from what I've seen of the new one, uh, is cool. And it's. Uh, I think they do a certain thing like you know i think like when you play i'll bring up anthem again when you play anthem there's like it's so stupid like it makes (laughs) you feel as a player it makes you feel so ill-equipped like like oh i could probably just afk and beat this mission you know what i mean like i'll just hold w like i don't need to use my skills (laughs) yeah i don't need to do tricks i can just stand in the distance and fire and this mission will end with me victorious. Yeah. You know, and um, and I feel like Division does a good job of being like, it's not super hard, but if you don't learn to no, use these tools, you, you need, will die. Yeah, you, need you, to know? Pay, you need to pay pretty close attention. Yeah. And they're really good about making you feel powerful, but also you can never rush in ever. Mm-hmm. And they, I like the cover system. One, one Another thing I like that in a lot of on, uh, always online games aren't great at is there's always something to do very close to you. So yeah. what I always find is that I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go over there and unlock that safe house, and then not not a third of the way there, I find three other things to do, and, mm-hmm. you, and which is great, and it's not in an overwhelming it's what you way because yeah. it's all optional. Yeah, it's kind of what if you I want to just run past, I could. It doesn't like spawn, you know, exclamation marks all over your map like an MMO. It's pretty like 
it, it they're very good about letting you control your experience mm. and if you just want to run out and like defend a control point for five minutes and then stop or if you want to go do a main mission which takes a lot much longer it's great I'm, I'm really enjoying it the one thing that makes me sad and i we talked about this upstairs a little bit and i think you thought i was joking is that there's no mage builds yeah and i only laughed because of the the name yeah well there's the idea yeah of a mage build like a skill power build yeah i can't speak to that because yeah. i haven't studio was it. saying that they they kind of didn't put it that way in yeah. this game yet and they kind of destroyed it in the first game i could see why that's kind of one of the things they did not want to bring back but that was kind of one of the biggest draws for me in the first game was being able to play it in a very different very yeah interesting way kind of not like everyone was playing it um you know kind of be the guy collecting the other loot like the yeah. things people didn't want i was like i can use that you know what no, i mean that is cool and um and doing something that was kind of effective when it worked and not effective when it didn't but yeah. very fun to try yeah you know and uh um, sort of like a glass cannon style where you don't really know and you only work. got one shot yeah. you know yeah. what i mean like like <laughs> yeah. your cooldowns sort of long like so if you nail these dudes it's gonna be pretty great but if you don't get done get done <laughs> um was a real fun way to play the game and uh you know i get it it's hard to balance around weird builds and stuff but yeah. like i said it was kind of like we were talking about before like just let people kind of break it like you know what i mean like you're the sanctity of this division is not precious you know yeah, what I, mean, I mean it's just the problem is that yeah balancing with everyone because if other people are playing it's you know you do kind of have to go to the lowest common denominator and the medium i'm yeah. sure there's a way to balance that but i can see how oh, that's a very different animal yeah and what they ended up doing was just adding a like a flat damage cap to skilled like to skilled powered tools oh, okay so what you'd use is there's a sticky bomb right it was like a it was like kind of on a gun and you'd and you'd shoot it and it would stick to something and then you could detonate it mm -hmm. right and if you boosted your skill power crazy you could like one shot anybody right because it <laughs> did so much that like sounds awesome well yeah i'd have you know you i was i played a lot of division one so yeah. i'm getting all the legendary or like the unique set gear all of its skill power my skill power is nuts you know what i mean yeah. and so i should be able to do a ton of damage right and so um but it's got an aoe like a grenade yeah so you know you could so if literally you hit right in the middle of a group. You yeah, just you one could, shot like you ten could guys. One shot a squad, right? Yeah. No problem. Like you'd be at the, the, you know, you'd see people pulling out of the dark zone, and they'd all be attaching bags at the same time. You know, and you just thunk, you just stick one, boom, and just blow all of them, right? And just steal all their loot. It was great, <laughs> but uh, but you know, like so they added a flat damage cap that was really low and made all of my gear useless. Yeah, it's but, hard to keep playing for that. And I was just like, screw this game, but um. So that was disappointing to me, but I, I get it. Do you I, think you'll play the second one? Maybe. I think I'm if, sure it'll be on sale in f a one week. I'm sure it's on sale right now. I'm sure yeah, if I went, sure slick, I'm sure if I went to Slick Deals and wrote Division 2, I could probably find it for 30 bucks right now, thirty nine ninety nine on yeah. cdkeys.ru. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Maybe I think that kind of game really depends if I – if I, that's one of those games I need to get encouraged to play. Yeah, like I have to have a friend that's like, love the division two, jump in, Check you're gonna out, love man. it. Let's squad up. Yeah, then I would probably play the division two on my own. Just I, you know, a lot of the times when I game, I just game solo. Yeah, and like put on headphones or like listen to podcasts or YouTube videos and stuff. So, um, I don't know. I'd really have to get drawn in to have that be a game that I did that with. Yeah, you know, no, that's fair. Um, I mean, that's kind of what I did for a lot of Division One, right? You pop it in, you put on like a long run podcast, and you just run around the dark zone and see what you can get out of that place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which is fun. But um, so we'll see. I don't know. I'm not not sure yet. Well, you let me know. I'll meet you on the streets of Washington D.C. I'll see you in Baltimore, bro. Oh, <laughs> is that where you're going? I don't know. It's nearby. It's Maryland, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But anyway, I like it. Again, I haven't played a lot. I haven't got to the end game, but I'm I'm really enjoying it a lot. It's one of those games where I, as soon as I get home, I'm looking forward to playing it, which is a pretty good endorsement. That is a good endorsement. The other game I've been playing is Stardew Valley. I finally got to the festival. How was it? Did anybody dance with you? Not one person. 
fuck those people, right? Yeah, that was pretty fucking rude and disappointing. Mm-hmm. You just wait. You just wait, party man. And I, you're gonna have the <laughs> best farm. You're gonna have the most money. Look, man, I already have some automatic sprinklers. I'm like, I'm getting my shit dialed in. That is pretty dialed because I, I went, I went straight to the mine and just grinded down to 50, so I get iron ore. So I'm just, I, I was like, I hate watering. I don't. I'm gonna put everything on hold until I get these sprinklers, and now I have a bunch of sprinklers. So I don't know what I'm gonna do next. I haven't decided. Maybe That's build pretty some, hardcore for your first spring. Maybe build some chicken farms or something. I don't know. I, I would definitely get into animal husbandry pretty quick. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do next. Now that I can just, throw, I don't gotta worry about the plants. Because you know, then you can start having you know food, milk, eggs, mayonnaise, stuff like that. I gotta build a kitchen. Yeah, you need all that. There's a lot to build. A man. Barn. It's a it's a big job. This farm. Ridgewen, it's called Ridgewen Farm. It's a big job, but you know what the most gratifying thing is? Rubbing everyone's face in it. Yeah, rubbing everyone's <laughs> face in the fact that you're the wealthiest person in town. And I just came from nowhere and in one came, year. Came from nowhere. These you're all these other motherfuckers have nothing. Than all these fucking losers, <laughs> these podunk fucking losers <laughs> in this Pelican shitty town. little town. The shitty little town, walking around the beach. I just walk in with like this trashy ass farm and in one year i'm a goddamn global magnate a global <laughs> magnate you're selling to the corporate sponsor city whatever yeah. what's the store called I got, sodas <laughs> uh yeah i forget i don't remember either i got a Monsanto like John i got a Monsanto or something. partnership yeah. going on yeah i got genetically modified seeds spraying pesticides all over <laughs> those vegetables bro uh no one thing i found out i don't remember if i mentioned this but the fact you can transfer your pc save to your phone and vice versa Fucking, fucking awesome what about your switch save no th- that's all proprietary but if you play it on pc you literally just copy the save you don't have to modify it and you put it in the right folder on your android phone what about your switch save no <laughs> it's, it's, it's switch and ps4 and xbox are proprietary but anyway so if you are out there and you played a shitload of stardew valley on your computer and you're like i don't want to start over you don't have to how much is it it's eight dollars on Android, and I I think it's still twelve or fifteen on PC. Eight dollars, pretty good deal, dude. And then what's funny, I was thinking about it, is all those stupid farming sims, some of which I've played, with the shitty cooldown times and the ads. This just smokes them by every conceivable metric on every level, and then there's no ads, there's nothing. It's just, it's like clearly the best game on Android. That's I guess it's a port, but it just it, so many games are trying to be Stardew Valley on phones, and then. They were just like, how about we just port Stardew Valley and yeah. it'll eviscerate every single one of them. And eight dollars is a lot for a mobile game. Is it Chucklefish? Yeah, mm-hmm. eight dollars is a lot for a mobile game. Some people are resistant to that for some reason, but I'm telling you, it's the probably the best game on Android. Yeah. Except maybe like Kotor. It's funny you say eight dollars is a lot of money, and some people are resistant. That's why I think the stupid uh, Apple thing is so dumb. No, oh, the arcade. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. It's because it's like. People don't see value in mobile games. Yeah. And you're asking them to pay kind of a pr- for a premium mobile game service. Yeah. I can't imagine who it's for. And magazines. Yeah. I re- yeah. It's like you take the things. I'm, I, I, my two favorite things are mobile games and, and magazines. It's like the two things people think are the most worthless right now. <laughs> Maybe newspapers yeah. is the third. And like CDs. And CDs. And you're like, you know these things that you would never spend real money on except be- when you're an addict to mobile games and, you, <laughs> and w- that, when you're yeah, a whale you and who who <laughs> does not want this service by the way yeah he only spends money on brawl stars right yeah. like yeah. um or whatever you know candy crush saga yeah. um, clash of clans yeah um but you're telling him yeah these things you never spend money on give us ten dollars a month and you can spend money on all of them it's just like Fuck what off. <laughs> What? Yeah, it seemed like a pretty. I mean, I didn't follow that closely, but it, I have zero interest in it. Yeah, me too. Even even if I did like Apple and was part of that ecosystem, I'd still have zero interest in it. Yeah. Anyway, Stardew Valley is awesome. Highly recommend it. It's great. It's on every console. What else did I play? Final Fantasy VIII. I've been playing. Finally got to the end of the first disc. It's such a weird ass game, but I do like it. It's very broken. Mm-hmm. It's very old very old it's like uh there's so much you take for granted now like i was running around this fucking city and it's all pre-rendered and there's a zero indication of what where you can go mm-hmm. and it's just like i just want to get to the goddamn train station i was running around there's no it's like it's just old but it's funny i was watching someone play seven yeah and same thing you I know think, that i think seven's even worse whatever that area is called where uh you lose your party member yeah and it's all like white yep. and like 
there's just like a million pathways, mm-hmm. but you cannot see any of them because yeah. it's like just it's like tan on white. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you're just like, I don't know, and I was watching someone play, and I'm just like, I what is, is this like a it's like a point and click adventure game? Like you, you just kind of wander like much. randomly around the world. It's so dumb. It is, yeah. It definitely feels antiquated in a lot of ways, but the story's great. It's beautiful. Music, pre rendered backgrounds are awesome. I'm definitely enjoying it, but it is. It, there are times where I'm genuinely like, "Fuck, this is sucks." It like sucks as a well. from a mechanical perspective, it sucks. Yeah, and Squall's the worst. Mm-hmm. With his bomber jacket. I mean, the jacket's kind of cool. The jacket's not cool. It's only j- you don't think it's cool because it's Squall. If Dante was wearing, it, you'd probably think it was cool. If the jacket was cool, Squall would look a lot cooler. He looks cool in the FMBs. He does not look cool in any of it. <laughs> You really don't like Squall. How dare you? I like, I don't know. I don't How? like his personality, but he looks cool. He's got How? belts. Belts is what's who do, who cool do, to you? Yeah, the, uh, you didn't know that? The more belts you have, the cooler you are. That's a fact. Did That's you? why Lulu from Five Minds of Ten is the coolest person who's ah, ever lived. got a fucking boy. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right. I think we should start wrapping up. Right. Uh, yeah Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah. Any thoughts you guys have, as always? We'd love to hear them. yeah Podcast on Twitter. Any thoughts you guys have on Twitter? We'd also love to hear them. Tech Yeah Podcast on Facebook. We don't we don't take questions on Facebook, so. No, I wouldn't. I'm just kidding. We, we do. I wouldn't send questions on Facebook. I would just like. You know what you should do on Facebook? Just react to the photo I post when I post an episode and don't click on the episode. So I can get lots of reactions, but have no actual value <laughs> from the ad I posted. Because that's what happens. That's what Facebook is good for. I post a, like an a episode on Facebook and everyone reacts to the photo. They're like, this is so cool. Yeah. They're Thanks. like, cool photo. We love your photo. It's of, like, I fuck don't, off. I don't, know what it's a, I don't know what it's a photo of, but I love it. It cost me $20 to show you that photo. <laughs> so fuck off. How about that? <laughs> that's probably why they like it. That's probably why they like it. Uh, I'm just kidding. Don't fuck off. Yeah. Um, we love you guys. We appreciate everyone yeah. for spending time and hanging out with us. Episode 10, man. We, uh, episode 10. We, we got plenty it. more coming. We did it, man. We did it. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We appreciate you. We appreciate you so much. And have a good weekend.